What's up guys, just got done with the breakdown and big news, just like every single time I put out a video, there's breaking news or there's something that goes on that gets everybody's attention. Well now it's with Conor McGregor and a lot of people will say, oh but it's just Conor tweeting, he's just saying stuff, but here's the thing man, Conor's a powerful figure in the sport and if he's calling out someone, you think the UFC's not gonna give them to him? Let's go through the whole thing here. Conor McGregor went on this tirade on Twitter. I will quote everything he says here, so starting with, quote, the fans make the sport. Watching the other night, I was against going in without them, but it will be my pleasure to display the power I possess with zero background noise for them. It's me and Justin next, as Habib is the biggest bottle fighter in the game, guarantee it." Unquote. Okay, let's talk about this. So right off the bat, Conor is calling out Justin Gaethje for the fight. We don't know when Habib's gonna come back. Habib said July, then before he said August, he said September before, and even prior to that he said October. So we don't know what month. Those are very far apart later on this year. Conor wants the fight soon. So he said it here he was against going into a fight without fans, but now he's changing his tune on that and he wants to fight Justin Gaethje. And there are a couple reasons for this. So they were supposed to fight before. Last year, it never came into fruition. Now Justin Gaethje just won the interim belt, so he is the next guy in line to fight Habib. So Conor strategically picking Justin Gaethje to not only defeat him and win the interim belt, but ultimately secure his position next to fight Habib. We all know Habib, he wants to fight the next in line, he wants to fight the best guy rather than the money fight, supposedly. So this is a way for Conor to get Habib and there is no way Habib can get out of it. And there's the other reason that I believe Conor as a martial artist, as a fighter and a fan of the sport. He sees Justin Gaethje has gotten better, he sees his improvements, and he's probably even more excited to fight Gaethje now, knowing how much better he has just gotten. He is also pretty confident in his chances against Justin Gaethje. Conor McGregor vs Justin Gaethje is a very interesting fight now. Before I would say, and I always said, Conor McGregor would easily defeat Justin Gaethje. Gaethje is way too hittable, he runs into the fire too much, he covers up too much, but now with Gaethje defeating Tony Ferguson and looking the way he did, that Justin Gaethje put a big fight against Conor McGregor. Because now he's not just going to shell up and stay in line of fire, he's going to move away, he has very good footwork, he's very fast, he has no telegraph in his punches, and his leg kicks are something Conor McGregor has never even felt before. What I think happens in this fight is, I think Conor wins the first two rounds 100%. I actually think he drops Justin Gaethje a few times in those two rounds. Now it all comes down to can Justin Gaethje survive? Can he take the shots, get back up, and survive Conor McGregor? What we know about Conor is if he drops Gaethje, he's not going to go to the ground. Gaethje's way too high level of a wrestler for that to happen, for Conor to give up any chances, right? And allow Gaethje to scramble and get back up to the feet or reverse the position and get on top of Conor because those instincts are still going to be there. When you hurt Justin Gaethje, when you hurt a wrestler, they go to wrestle you. They try to reach over for you and grab you. If Gaethje is tough enough to survive those sharp strikes and get into the third, fourth, and fifth rounds, he is going to eventually finish Conor McGregor, I believe. Gaethje has five round cardio beyond five round cardio now, which is crazy to think about. Just him pacing himself made him a five round fighter, when before, he was barely a three round fighter. I don't think Conor's gonna withstand all the light kicks. I think the light kicking damage from the beginning of the fight all the way to the fourth and fifth round is gonna be too damaging. Because Conor starts to gas out, he's gonna fall into those untelegraphed punches of Justin Gaethje. Maybe Gaethje catches him a few times early in the fight. Conor feels the power. And then third, fourth, and fifth, Conor's not gonna be able to take them anymore. Eventually, Justin Gaethje finishes him. That all comes down to can Justin Gaethje survive the first two rounds? He is going to get hit. He is probably gonna get dropped. Conor is going to fight as the counter puncher. He's going to counter Justin Gaethje, I know for sure, and that's what's going to get Gaethje dropped. So I pick Conor 60-40. And then on to Conor's next tweet, quote, I love Tony. We represented him amazingly in Paradigm Sports and were betrayed for our promise of a baseball contract. But frame and preparation here was just embarrassing. His methods and conversation are humorous slash enjoyable, but he was never the level perceived, although tough. It is Dustin, Tony next when Tony heals, if he does. Dustin will beat him if changes are not made, which they won't. Dustin, although game and in the mix, will be fed to the floor again. Couple wins here and there, then fold in half. Rinse and repeat, Dustin's career. Unquote. So here talking about Tony Ferguson and Dustin Poirier. He likes Tony Ferguson, he says. Paradigm Sports represented him well and stuff, and he betrayed them, and ultimately Connor didn't believe he was as good as they said. Um, on Tony's account, he said Paradigm Sports did not do him any favors. In fact, he left them because it was more of a toxic relationship. That's weird. Tony wanted to be a baseball player. But in terms of saying that he is tough, he's just not at the level perceived. I don't necessarily agree. Just because he lost to Justin Gaethje 
you gotta also take a lot of things into account. Now, they're not excuses for Tony Ferguson losing, but they are factors. 100% they happen. I still believe Tony Ferguson is not gonna be able to beat Justin Gaethje. Even with adjustments, I don't think Tony can beat Justin. But you have to take note, seven month training camp, cut weight twice within a month, preparing for Habib like most of his entire career and prepare for him like six and a half months and then fought a completely different fighter, a striker with power. And also I'm pretty sure he got shocked at the way Justin Gaethje was fighting him. And it's not the Justin Gaethje that everybody knew about, right? And he got put into a position in the fight where he's never been before. So if they rematch, I guarantee Tony Ferguson would compete a lot better, possibly can find a route to win, but my prediction, I do think Justin Gaethje would beat him again. That doesn't mean Tony Ferguson is not at that level. He has cleaned out more of the division than any lightweight in history besides Khabib. He was the interim champion. He has lost twice in the UFC ever. and has some amazing performances under his belt, right? Not only is he tough, he is the cardio king. He does things very unorthodox. And because of that, he's able to get the better of almost everybody in the division. And as for Tony versus Dustin, that has to be the next fight. I agree with Conor McGregor 100%. Because if it's not Connor, the only guy left is Dustin. Tony has beaten everybody else. There is Charles Oliveira, of course, but I don't think Tony will take a fight with Charles. I think he wants to take a fight with Dustin, and I think Dustin would want to fight Tony Ferguson, rather than Dan Hooker or something, right? They both get more money out of it, they're bigger names, they can be a main event, co-main event on a big card, whatever it is, and the winner of that is very close to a title shot. If Tony beats Dustin, he probably gets the next title shot, so he's not away from a title shot now just because he lost first time in what eight years it doesn't mean he's never getting a title shot again he just has to be a guy like dustin or beat a guy like connor and he gets right into there again or the loser of habib and justin gage you know something like that he's right in there for a title shot easier said than done and tony ferguson healing that's the biggest worry for me tony ferguson losing is not the thing that worries me too much it's the damage he got dealt and especially being a 36 years old, has been fighting for a very, very long time. I don't know if he's gonna be able to heal that up. I don't know if he's gonna be able to overcome this one because that's the kind of fight that would destroy someone's career forever, right? Look what happened to Henry Barrow, you know, look what happened to other fighters in the past. They got to a point where they just couldn't take any more damage. They couldn't withstand a punch anymore. And a Tony Ferguson that can't take a punch is a very unsuccessful Tony Ferguson. So I can see Dustin defeating Tony Ferguson. If Tony comes back the same, it's going to be a tough fight for both of them because Dustin obviously has better boxing than Tony Ferguson and he can do what Justin Gaethje did, of course. But is Dustin as composed as Justin Gaethje under that kind of pressure and volume and ferocity? I don't think as much. And he doesn't have the same kind of power Justin Gaethje has. So I think Dustin can do what Gaethje did, but at a lesser degree. And he doesn't have near the chin that Justin Gaethje has, right? Dustin has like a moderate chin. Right, nothing crazy. That uppercut Tony landed on Justin Gaethje. If he lands that on Dustin, I believe Dustin's gonna be out. I think that fight ends right there. I pick Tony 60-40. Let's go to the next tweets from Conor McGregor. Quote, Justin, there is no danger in a man that hugs legs. We all know. Try and dance around what the real threat is here. All you want. I'm going to butcher you, your teeth. I'm gonna put them on a necklace. Speak of my skills as a father. You are dead. Don't ever represent the great nation of the United States of America ever again. No true American would speak so highly of or allow a convicted member of the jihadi terror cell represent them. Never forget, you are a blind fool and I'm going to finish the job." Unquote. Taking shots at Justin, taking shots at Habib, and the fact that they're both managed by the same guy, Ali Abdelaziz. Now, he's talking about Justin Gaethje, talking about Habib rather than talking about Connor. Justin Gaethje's calling out Habib. He's not even talking about Connor anymore. And it seems, I know, I don't want to say Connor haters, not even Connor haters. There are some fans who could look at this and say that Connor seems a bit jealous. That he's not talking about him anymore. And he's talking about Habib. Personally, I don't think that's true. I think he's strategically trying to pick out Justin Gaethje, get a fight with him, and eventually get a fight with Habib because he doesn't know when Habib is going to fight. So might as well fight Justin Gaethje, who didn't take that much damage. Yeah, he got dropped. Actually, has some damage, but he should be ready to go in the next few months, right? Or ready to get into training camp in the next few months. And he's saying that Habib is no danger. Ah, that's... As a fan trying to be objective, I understand he's kind of like... Hopefully he's being sarcastic or exaggerating here because he got absolutely mauled by Habib. Worse than anybody he's ever fought up against before, right? Even including Floyd Mayweather. And the whole thing about Ali Abdelaziz, I honestly just don't know what he's talking about. I know those accusations he made before, but I just I haven't looked at it at all. And then his next tweets, quote, Habib, you absolute embarrassment, scurrying, hiding rat as usual. As I have said many times, as has been said many times, through the pane of glass, it was confirmed what was always known. Quote unquote, no comment, LOL, an embarrassment to real fighting. After this division demolition job, it is 170 pounds next. 
unquote. So that's all Connor had to say. Taking the shot, Habib now, he still has that grudge with him. Nothing crazy. If people don't know what he's talking about, the pane of glass, he's talking about the whole bus thing. He's still on that, that Habib was in the bus. He saw his face. He looks scared in Connor's point of view. And uh, he's an embarrassment. To the, I don't really know what he means about the no comment thing. Habib is the king right now in the division. He's absolutely one of the best fighters in the world. It's hard to describe his skills. Right, you can say he's a cross sniffer, hugs legs, all that stuff, but at the end of the day, man, he defeats and not only defeats, finishes almost everybody he fights. And he rarely ever gets hit. So that's pretty typical for Connor to say. But then saying 170 pounds next, he's looking really far into the future. Hopefully he wants Hori Masadal to defeat Kamaru Usman if that fight is going to happen because now I don't know what's going to happen with Jorge if he's not fighting Usman. That fight should happen, right? But he may be looking too far forward because you got to remember, Conor only has one win in the lightweight division. Yes, he's fought Nate Diaz and Donald Cerrone who compete at 170 now, but those are not top ranked guys. Those are not Justin Gaethje. Those are not Tony Ferguson. Those are not Charles Oliveira. Those are not Habib, you know? He defeated Dustin Poirier, but that was 145 a long time ago. Right, very, very different fighter now. I believe that fight will be actually be very competitive now. So we'll see. We'll see if this blows up in his face. We'll see if he becomes Mystic Mac and actually predicts all of this happening. Tony losing to Dustin. He defeats Justin Gaethje, embarrasses him, goes and defeats Habib, and goes to 170 and wins that belt. We will see. It's a very interesting tirade Connor went on here. If you know his tweet before all of this, he was kind of congratulating everybody. And he was happy that the event was going on. But then he knew he had to be the competitor. He had to be the fighter and give his thoughts out on what's going on. And he's trying to secure some positions against fighters because you have to know, man, that pay-per-view model is different. And because of that, the UFC doesn't have to really bend to everything Connor does. So Connor's trying to be more lenient, play ball a little bit more and fight contenders. Instead of saying, I want to fight Habib now, he wants to fight Justin Gaethje now because it's a more likely scenario of happening than him fighting Habib. Even though Dana White might succumb to it, Habib is most likely not. So Connor wants to secure an opportunity to face Habib where he cannot, in Connor's words, scurry away, you know? So very interesting. And leave a comment below what you guys think of all this. What do you guys think is going on with Connor? And do you agree with what he's saying? Do you think he's actually predicting the future here and all this is gonna happen? So my next video, I don't know what's gonna be. I'm gonna try to do the prediction video, but it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be really tough to squeeze it in by tomorrow you know it's gonna be tough to do that because the fights are on Wednesday and then we got Saturday as well even for Saturday it's gonna be tough because if I make a breakdown for the next card it gives me like one day to make the prediction video and it usually takes more than a day but there's a lot of stuff to look forward to very busy times and I'll see you guys then